Good evening, Dungeon Masters, I'm Baron de Rob. Bethesda's 2011 release, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, will likely go down in history as one of the most captivating video games of all time. Even 10 years later, content creators are still publishing mod reviews, optimization tips, and lore videos for the game. Among this decade-long content cycle, the most perennial Skyrim observation is the sense of discovery experienced in a breathtaking and expansive world. As a result, Skyrim serves as the poster child for how to design a sandbox D&D campaign. It goes without saying that Skyrim's main storyline is pretty thin. There's only just enough meat in the central turmoil to provide a moral dilemma. If the player chooses to engage with it, the Dovahkiin is stuck picking between two evils, the authoritarian puppet state hell-bent on eradicating free speech, or the xenophobic nationalists who systematically oppress foreigners. But beyond a few fetch quests and the possible destruction of Whiterun, this political stalemate doesn't have any direct impact on the Dovahkiin's autonomy or exploration. The Dovahkiin may occasionally bump into a military garrison camp or some soldiers escorting prisoners on a highway, but it's entirely possible for the Dovahkiin to wander off in a random direction and have almost no interaction with this turmoil at all. Therefore, the plot doesn't budge unless the Dovahkiin interacts with it. The lesson here is to treat any plots or tensions in your game world as a thematic backdrop and less like an actual plot of the game world itself. If your players decide to totally abstain from certain aspects of a storyline, you shouldn't need to block off sections of the map to protect a particular story beat. In other words, you should not have any story beats worth protecting. To reference the Swordfish Islands author Jacob Hurst, the central story should be a powder keg waiting to explode. But that's the nuance here. It's waiting to explode. By reducing a plot's complexity to a thin, stalemated tension, you gain more emergent narrative benefits as you build out other tools to support your player's hex crawling and sandboxing. If you know the central tensions that exist among various factions in your game world, you can use random encounters to create an emergent story that helps bring those conflicts into focus without intruding on your player's sense of exploration. While Skyrim has over 350 fixed map locales, much of the game's depth also comes from its random encounters. Unlike the 1986 Dragon Warrior game, where every random encounter consisted entirely of combat-hungry monsters, many of the encounters in Skyrim are just people the Dragonborn can interact with. Thugs, pilgrims, Thalmor ambassadors, dragon attack refugees, they all have small narrative cues that help illustrate the goings-on of the game world without pushing the players in any specific direction. This kind of random or emergent storytelling leans heavily into robust random encounter tables to flesh out the feelings and emotions of otherwise nameless NPCs the players meet. By having NPCs that reflect the tensions of the game world on a personal scale, you don't need much more information than a few bullet points detailing the needs and goals of each faction or key NPC caught in their own stalemate powder keg. This kind of emergent storytelling as a form of tabletop campaign creation is probably best seen in the indie game setting Yoon Suen The Purple Land. While the book has a few dozen pages discussing the history and general cultural tensions of a fantasy Indo-Chinese setting, over 200 pages of the book contain nothing but random tables. The author's goal isn't for the game master to have answers to the question, what is the story? This story isn't important in a sandbox. Instead, random tables cause the narrative of the Purple Land, or similarly in Skyrim, to emerge organically when players ask the question, what is happening? happening at this new place we've just discovered. This is why random encounters in Skyrim make the world feel so lived in. There is no plot per se. The world and its people just simply exist, and so their existence can be discovered as the players explore. 
As an aside, I've got another video discussing random encounter creation, but to briefly touch on the concept here, random tables work best when they include various random NPC prompts for motivations that can be rolled on separately from the NPC or monster. This disparate rolling further adds to a region's emergent story. As the GM, you might roll up a surprising motivation or complexity that you wouldn't normally think of. These unlikely combinations do the storytelling's heavy lifting and further add to the exploratory wonder the players gain from a sandbox campaign. Every discoverable location in Skyrim has some sort of handcrafted story or issue the players can explore or simply choose to ignore. Rather than leaning into contrived dungeon design patterns like the Five Room Dungeon, Skyrim simply drops the player at the front door of a situation and lets the player figure out what's going on organically. Usually, these more complex location-specific encounters generally don't have any kind of inciting quest giver. Instead, the player is empowered to explore explore on their own volition. As an example, the Dovahkiin might see a cave in a frozen canyon, go inside, and find a ransacked archaeological dig site littered with corpses. The Dovahkiin then might read a deceased researcher's notes and better prepare for the denizens further in. But they don't have to. The monsters will prove what killed the laborers in the frozen cave anyway. This kind of ad hoc exploration is what makes these locations so memorable. Interestingly though, these keyed or discoverable locations are usually little more than well thought out narratives of two or more random encounters smashed together for more impact. As an in-practice example, we can roll up two encounters and see what tension or synergy emerges. Imagine a group of hungry bandits looking for food, and some refugees and their livestock fleeing a destroyed village. Putting them together suddenly makes for an interesting dungeon situation. The bandits might have taken over an abandoned keep and kidnapped the refugees while they were fleeing from their village. The refugees now have been forced into slave labor and must feed the bandits with their very own livestock. Rolling up a pack of wolves instead of those pilgrims might inspire a bandit dogfighting ring where the cook sneaks the dead dog meat into everyone's food. Furthermore, creating an appropriate dungeon to house these situations can give the players the dungeon crawling experience they expect from a D&D game while also reinforcing the emergent narrative of the game world. Each one of these conflicts or situations created in this way further adds clarity to the campaign's various tensions. In essence, Skyrim teaches us to keep our campaign story tense, but thin. This allows those thin plots to inspire what we put on our random encounter tables without needing to protect any particular narrative thread. This further encourages us to lean into those random tables in order to generate more complex adventures for our players to explore. If you want to check out my video on random encounter table design, click the link on your screen now. Otherwise, thanks for watching Dungeon Masters, and good night.